just made that cast. I'm gonna let the bait hit the bottom and I'm gonna watch my line. After, after that swim bait hit, hits the surface, I'm gonna watch my line. It's tightening up, it's tightening up, it's tightening up. There's the slack of my line. I know it's on the bottom. I'm just gonna give it one pop and just slow wind it back to the boat. There's one. Nice one on a spark shad there. Absolutely smoked it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Come here. Right, there's a nice one. <laughs> Beautiful smallmouth. It's a real plain, simple ball head. Um, there's some rocks down there. And the difference between like an Okashira screw head or an Okashira head that's got a pointed nose to it, that's great and fine and everything and, and clear water or open water. But whenever I'm fishing rock boulders, um, I like that ball head because it ricochets and bounces off those boulders a lot a lot better than let's say a pointed head or a you know a fish head jig head would so that ball head a little quarter ounce i mean it is stuck and when they eat that spark shad that three inch spark shad they typically get it all the way back there look at that <laughs> it's gone and they don't come off that's a beauty 20 feet of water get back down there and that's the thing this time of year you know whenever you have like a uh, weather change like we've had here. This is the end of the summer. It's turning into fall. A weather change or an abrupt seasonal change like, like now, it's hard to beat those little finesse swim baits, whether on a drop shot, drop swimming, or on a jig head like this. When you see them down there, just off the bottom, 22, 20 feet of water, this thing is absolutely deadly. Yeah, again, it's just an eight pound test leader uh, to a quarter ounce jig head, uh, round head. It's just a generic jig head small hook three inch spark shad the number one thing to keep in mind when you're rigging um, any swim bait at that with a jig head is making sure it absolutely goes in straight right down the middle um, and the best way to do that is you could kind of see where there's a there's a straight line that goes right down the back of it so just make sure everything's in line i just poke it through right down dead center and just almost look right down the barrel of it and keep going, thread it. Longer runs, longer threads are better than little short threads, you know? That way it doesn't go in um, zigzagging. Just one nice long run right down the middle, pop it out of the back and thread it onto the jig head. And we're going fishing, the spark shad. This is a really cool spot right here. And again, whenever we're dealing with abrupt weather pattern changes or seasonal changes. We're at the end of summer, we're turning into fall. Or if I'm going to an unfamiliar lake, the absolute first thing I do on a new body of water or when the weather changes is I go to where the wind is blowing. Um, and as you can see here, this is a nice little cove, a nice little pocket. There's some grass or some tulies back here, but the wind is blowing right into it. And I'm looking at my map down here and it's just a nice big cove and this wind is pushing right up against these weeds and it's a nice little ledge. And, and uh, we just idled over this spot and we saw a couple big ones on it. Smallmouth are just hanging off this kind of weed wall and that wind is pushing all this bait in here. And that little three inch spark shad, as I cast it parallel with that weed line, those fish ambush it like that, man. It's a lot of fun, so. And everyone knows a grub, just an old school grub on a ball head or a Kalen's head or whatever you want to call it. Everyone knows that catches smallmouth year round, especially in the colder months. Um, but when you introduce this three inch spark shad, it's like new school grubbing. It's the same subtle presentation, except the three inch spark shad, it's got eyeballs, it's got gills, it's got a keeled shaped belly. So whenever you kill it, it swims straight down and it drives those smallmouth nuts. Especially in this clearer water when all the details count, all the details matter. This is the Mega Bass Destroyer Addermine drop shot rod. And although it's only six foot 11, it's not very long. I can make real long casts because of that real thin 15 pound braided line. If I'm slow reeling it back, there's not much slack in my line. A fish grabs it, whether he swims towards me or swims away. I just give it a nice little reel set and pull into it. That high modulus graphite and the destroyer series rods loads right up and that fish comes to the boat every time. We're fishing about 22 feet of water. I'm letting it fall, I'm letting it fall, I'm letting it fall. As soon as it hits the bottom, I'll give it one pop and then just a nice slow reel all the way back to the boat. 
Every now and then too, if I find an area that's got a lot of depth contour changes, like high spots and low spots, I wanna maintain that, not bottom contact, but real close to the bottom. So if I feel like I'm pulling off the bottom a little bit, I'll go ahead and kill it, watch my line, and when my line stops, I know I'm on the bottom and I'll go ahead and continue my nice slow retrieve. 90% of the time, I'll just slow roll it. But if I start to see them suspended off the bottom, like they're right in the middle of the water column, say I'm in 25 feet of water, um, and they're right in the middle, you know, 17, you know, 15, 17, I'll go ahead and speed it up and then kill it. And then speed it up and then kill it. And if you think about it, that swim bait's going through. I just had one little one eat it. <laughs> If you think about it, that swim bait's coming up through the water column and then diving down, coming up and diving down. And a lot of times when those fish suspend in the water column, um, it means they're chasing bait. They're chasing bait up and they're feeding up. So um, that's when I'll take it off the bottom, you know, take that slow retrieve out of play, speed it up, kill it, speed it up, kill it, and get a lot of good bites doing that too. 